This week we're talking to the Heli Realtor, an agent up in Michigan that has a helicopter and sells a bunch of luxury homes and he mixes the two together in his marketing and he's known as the Heli Realtor. He takes his clients on helicopter rides. He'll do photography and video of his listings from his helicopter and he flies his helicopter to listing presentations. Very memorable. He's somebody that, uh, that absolutely understands attention and how to use it on social media to grow your brand. So this week we're talking with Dylan Tent from Signature Sotheby's up in Michigan, also known as the Heli Realtor. Very interesting conversation, very interesting guy, doing some really cool stuff. Let's do it. What's up, guys? I'm here with Dylan Tent, the Heli Realtor from Signature Sotheby's up in Birmingham, Michigan. One of the more entertaining realtors on on Instagram. Uh, I really like watching his stuff. So, Dylan, welcome to the Massive Agent Podcast, man. How's it going? It's doing great. How about yourself? Very good. Very good. Uh, this is actually the first time we've spoken, but you know, I've been I've been watching your stuff here and there on Instagram, and you have a really cool angle. You're a helicopter pilot. You so you you have a helicopter and you sell homes. And you seem to have merged the two, right? Yes, that's correct. That's actually how I got into selling real estate. I used to take pictures of people's houses from the air and sell them door to door. And one of my customers said, hey, if you get your real estate license, you can sell my house. And it was a million dollar house. So I wanted to work at the best luxury real estate company in the world. So I joined Sotheby's. Um, my first listing was a million two. My second listing was a million three. My third listing was 2.7, all within about two and a half months. Um, I'd never had a job before this. And, and I wanted to use helicopters and really entertaining videos to sell big houses. And, you know, a million dollar house is a lot in Michigan. Sure. Uh, you know, the market probably, you know, the high, most expensive sale ever would be like, you know, 10 or 15 million for something crazy. But, you know, one to three or one to four is like, you know, a very nice home here. That's cool, man. So how long have you been an agent? This is my seventh year. Seventh year. Awesome. And, and so you joined Sotheby's and was it natural from the beginning? Like let, let's go back to when you started, you obviously got some quick wins with some big time listings. Um, did it just continue from there or, you know, what, what were some of those, what were some of the growing pains that you, that you had to learn and endure, you know, your first few years? Well, I, I started working on big projects right away. And I'd never owned a house and I never had a job. And you have to go to a listing appointment and convince somebody that's owned a lot of homes and is very successful that you're the person that they should hire, not like the top agent in an area. Hmm. So I had to out advertise everybody essentially. I, you know, usually I'm wearing a suit. It's hot here today. I just threw a sport coat on, but uh, I'd wear a suit every day. I would show up with a clean car. Um, I got really involved with like, you know, online marketing and, you know, social media marketing, probably before a lot of the other agents did. And then our videos would be entertaining. So they would go kind of viral and we would get a couple hundred thousand views, you know, a million views. And then we started getting, you know, noticed and, you know, people started to see my name regularly on more expensive listings. Um, so it just kind of, you know, grew organically from there. You're somebody that obviously gets social media, you know, you, you naturally just understand how it works. If you're able to get that kind of visibility on your, on your stuff. So what are you doing? Like, can you, for anyone who's never seen your Instagram or never seen any of your videos, what, what are some of those things that you're doing? So we would turn each house into like the, we would identify what the strengths are of the house. So if it's lakefront, um, you know, you have, so we want to sell the lakefront lifestyle and so what I would do in that situation is like, I'm, I'm wearing a three piece suit and a wakeboard boat, you know, is pulling away from the dock and I grab the rope and we do a dock start, which is, you know, you're not in the water, you're on the dock, they, they gun it, you jump off. And now I'm in a three piece suit wakeboarding, doing a backflip over the waves. And <laughs> that would get, you know, 200,000 views. I jumped a guy's house on my motorcycle because I grew up racing motorcycles and it's like, it's a long jump. It wasn't very complicated, but it looks kind of fun. We jump, you know, a couple, you know, 70, 80 feet. And, and he's like, Hey, you're not going to sue me if you crash. I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, but we would jump motorcycles on houses. I jumped one off of somebody's pool, you know, riding unicycles and, you know, we would do funny stunts that, but they would have something to do with the house. 
you know, um, whatever that was. So we, we had a house on a golf course. We made a happy Gilmore video and I actually have the putter from happy Gilmore. I have a Bruins Jersey construction boots, sweatpants. And, uh, you know, we go out there and happy Gilmore shot right onto the fairway and then you use a Ritz cracker as a ball marker, like they do in the movie. And then you tap it in. I saw that one that, that, that got my attention because it was so well done. And I noticed the putter. I'm like, how the hell did you get that? Birthday present from my mom. <laughs> I can, it's, it is easily the, I think the most quotable movie, the most quoted movie on the planet, because people play a lot of golf every day and I've never played golf one time and not had somebody make a happy Gilmore quote. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It, it was a, it was a well done video. It was a short one too, right? Like it wasn't yeah. this big, long thing. Yeah. And yeah. you know what, it, just, it got a lot of activity for the house and um, you know, the people love it. And then I get a lot of like, cause everybody knows like 10 realtors and you have to be top of mind. So even people, even other agents in the industry that I know that are friends, they'll be like, yeah, I was talking to this person. I told them what I did. And then they, you know, your name gets brought up all the time. And it's because the people in the Metro Detroit, Detroit area, I've seen the guy that lands the helicopters at houses and makes the dumb videos. And I always make fun of myself too. I don't want to sit there and be like, you know, I'm not, I actually made a video where we're making fun of the people that are all hopping out of their clients, Lamborghinis, flexing them like they're theirs. Right. And so I like make a joke at myself hopping out of a Lamborghini. And then it's like, no, 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 just kidding. This is how I really do it. And then I, I ride my unicycle up to the house. So stuff yeah. like that is fun. Wait, your, your stuff does not come across as pretentious douchebag, but rather like you're making fun of the pretentious douchebags. Um, and even if it did though, I try not to, but even if people are like, oh my God, this kid's landing a helicopter at a house, like what a douche. It's like, you know what? As long as they remember it, I don't care. I can't think of anything more memorable or, or attention getting than landing a helicopter in somebody's house. That's uh, that's cool. So um, you just seem like somebody who, who naturally understands how to get attention and how to do it in the right way so that it's not like so obnoxious. I mean, cause anyone can get attention. You know, they can go light themselves on fire in the street. That doesn't mean that that's effective marketing for their business, but you figured, figured out how, um, along the way, like since these last seven years, you've been selling homes, have there been any videos or any campaigns that you've done that just did not work well? And you're like, Oh, I, I learned the, the hard way not to do that again. Have, have you had any of those lessons? Well, first off, talking about lighting yourself on fire in the street, I wish Governor Whitmer would do that to herself in Michigan. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, here's one that was effective, but I got yelled at for it quietly. So there's this Canadian guy uh, that I know, and they don't have guns up there, right? Mm -hmm. and so I'm selling this house out in the country, and they have their own shooting range. And I go to the listening appointment. I'm like, oh, I make these awesome videos. We always try to sell the lifestyle. You know, the guy's like, well, I've got a shooting range. So he opens a safe. And I grew up, I grew up with every type of weapon that you can imagine. So opens a safe, hands me an air 15, hands me a bunch of two, two, three, uh, a bag of Tannerite, which is an exploding incendiary target mm. and says, go have fun. And he gives me a, a box of stuffed animals. So we made this like real estate video where it ends with me shooting an exploding, you know, stuffed animal um, while I'm wearing a cowboy hat on their shooting range. <laughs> And so, you know, and this is like right after there's like some shooting or something. So people like everyone always wants to blame the gun, which is dumb. But, you know, my boss is like, hey, you know, one of our agents kind of had a problem with the fact that you did this, you know, you're shooting an AR-15 at a stuffed animal of a dog. And I was like, man, we're out in the country. I'm going to sell this house. And if it goes viral and somebody has a problem, you can fire me, but we're going to sell this thing. Mm -hmm. And um, house was on the market with another agent for two years. We sold it in 30 days without changing the price. And it was to somebody from Facebook that saw the video. That, that's it. Like you, you just understand how important that is. It, uh, and that's cool. Um, so, all right. Um, I want to talk about you, you and your helicopter. How long have you been flying a helicopter? Nine years. Nine years. Okay. And, and you, so you started that prior to getting into real estate. Um, what is that like? Like, I, I've never actually been on a helicopter, but it, um, like, how long does it take to get your license? You, like, run us through that whole thing, because that's super interesting to me. All right, so I watched a snowboarding movie from Red Bull called The Art of Flight. Yes. And in the first two minutes, they drop off, you know, they drop off snowboarders at the top of a mountain in a helicopter, and then they just basically put it almost upside down and take off straight down the mountain, almost inverted. 
and it's got the big Red Bull logo on there. And I watched that. And before that scene ended, I Googled helicopter pilot, pilot jobs and I mentally quit college. And I, I stopped going after like two weeks from that. Um, so I switched to helicopters, got all my ratings. So to become a private pilot, I am a flight instructor, but to be a private pilot, it's minimum 40 hours. You have to pass a, set, a hundred question test with a 70 or better. You have to do a check ride and then a oral examination with a FAA examiner. That's private license. Commercial is 200 hours and all of your tolerances get cut in half. Plus you have to talk about um, different requirements a commercial pilot faces. Instrument is another 40 hours to fly in weather like Kobe shouldn't have been flying in. And you don't want to fly helicopters in instrument conditions, but I know how to do it, but it sucks. And then flight instructor, you can get after that. So I have all of those. I'm in California and I was offered a job that paid $400 a week to teach people from China that barely, barely spoke English how to fly. And I'm like, this is not worth me dying for. So I'm flying over the houses in Malibu and I go, I bet I could sell a picture of that house for $500 and I could do that all day. So I came home, rented a helicopter and a photographer and flew over every nice house that I could find, took pictures, mailed them samples, went door to door and um, you know, just thought I could sell them people pictures of their houses and businesses. It pretty much failed miserably, but I just listed a $6 million house or no, Three seven three million seven fifty in a city where I knocked on somebody's door eight years ago and tried to sell them a picture and they remembered it. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow, that's cool. So, how does the helicopter then, uh, like, is how do you fit that into your marketing plan? I mean, I, I see it in your content on social, but when you go meet with a seller, you know, how do you pitch? You know, you having you having your own helicopter and all of that. So. I work a very big geographical area and there's a lot of big farms. So physically last year, there was a, there were days where I would have had to drive hundreds of miles between mm. four showings and I would fly there and I'd go eight minutes here, 12 minutes here, six minutes here, 25 minutes passed and then come back and I'd play 18 holes of golf in a day like that. And usually I'd be driving sun up to sundown. I drove personally 55,000 miles last year. I never shut down during the, you know, bullshit government flatten the curve crap. So I worked <laughs> every day. Um, yeah. Actually, the first day it started, I flew to a listing appointment on a lake because everybody said if I was driving on the road, I'd get pulled over. I was like, well, I'll just fly there. I don't care. It, yeah. was, a, it was a lake house with a tiny backyard and landing there was really scary every time because, you know, the lot was about as wide as my rotors are. But so I, I use it for transportation. After a sale, I fly people over the city of Detroit or fly them over their house as a closing gift. If anybody ever needs to see something that's like outside of a, a decent drive, I'm happy to fly them there, but that people rarely take me up on that. And then we use it in marketing videos. That's awesome. I mean, it's, there's so many agents that use drone photography and drone video, it, it, they should, right? And then you, you're just like, well, let's just do a helicopter. Uh, I love that. Like we still use drones for like all of the, the content, but sure. uh, you know, for taking it, but it is, it is, if, if there's an opportunity to land it at a house, it gets, it makes my videos go that much more viral every time that we can do it. So we try to make it fun. Um, and you know, it's all a write off. Like, you know, if you have a high income and, and you don't own a bunch of real estate, then all you're going to do is pay taxes to the government. And I personally want to pay zero and I'm almost there. Uh, with depreciation and write-offs, but um, that thing is a gigantic, you know, tax haven for me as well. I've heard that, you know, people that have their own planes, their own helicopters, like it's, you know, the business owns it and it's a, it's a legit business expense. And I can't think of a more legit business expense than how you use it. Um, like if you wanted to go fly for an hour, like how much does that cost? Like fuel and, and all that. And not only is it a business expense for real estate, but I also I also own a helicopter tour business, and I try to hmm. turn everybody that does a flight with me into a buyer or a seller of houses. And I fly them over all the houses that I've sold that are sweet on my tour, so they're stuck interviewing me for an hour, and they don't even realize it. They they well, called me to go for a helicopter ride, and they got an interview. Um, and then I save their name in a database. I follow up with them, and you know stuff like that. But you know, to run the helicopter that I have, brand new, if you were to buy one like that, it'd be about five seventy-five. 
uh, 600,000. I bought mine with half its life left on it for 240. Um, nice. And it, you know, they advertise the operating costs around $212 an hour. I think it's probably closer to 265. Um, but like last summer, I had a 300 or $300 or $400 part break and it was a $43,000 repair. Damn. So, and people are always like, oh, Dylan's successful because he has a helicopter. It's like the amount of times that it's ever gotten me a deal, it's a lot less than you'd think. Has it, it has gotten me attention online, but if I didn't have it, I would get attention online jumping, you know, backflipping in a suit on a wakeboard and jumping a motorcycle off somebody's house. So like if I were to point to anything that's made me more successful, it's making creative videos of any kind rather than saying, you know, cause people aren't just like, oh my God, I need to go in your helicopter. Let's sign up. Like that's never happened. Really? Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, never, no, it's just a bonus like, for them. It's a bonus. And mo most people don't take me up on going flying in it either. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so, okay. So if you take some clients out for an hour or so, it's, you know, 300 bucks, let's call it in, in operating expenses for fuel and everything. I mean, I've spent more than that on closing gifts for clients, like getting them a limo for a few hours to take their family and, and cruise the town or, you know, just some thing, right? Like some plastic thing. Um, but you're, you're offering an experience, which is super cool. And it, it separates you. So um, I imagine a lot of other agents know who you are as well because of, because of what you put out online, right? A hundred percent. And it, it's honestly, because I'm, you know, whether like, like it or not, people know that I sell a lot of homes because of the, so we, we get deals accepted all the time just because it's me. So when you're working with, I mean, in right now the house is, there's like 20 buyers for every house. So at least like my name is recognizable enough to leverage that into like, Hey, you know, I sold 40 houses last year. I don't have assistant. I will get this done. Like, let's, let's work together. Not with any of these other idiots, you know, whatever it is, depending on, you know, how you have to approach the situation. But so that's a real thing. And, and I want to talk about this for a second. It's, it's so important. I don't know what it is, but agents these days, especially in like local Facebook groups, they just want to like dunk on each other and, and beat each other up and like, well, you're an idiot and I'm so smart when what you really should be doing is building as many great relationships with other local agents as you possibly can, because who the hell's on the other side of the deal? It's those agents. And so if you were a douchebag in a Facebook group to them three weeks prior, and now you're trying to get your offer accepted and they're like, what an asshole. Like, you know, they're probably, that's not going to help you if there's 30 other offers. So that's a big deal. I, I was talking with one of my agents on my team from Oregon and he just bought a house for his family and his relationship with the other agent actually helped him get the offer accepted. And they were 15 grand less than, than the highest offer yeah. relationship. So that's a big deal. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Well, and I'm glad that you kind of hit on that as well, because I manage a, one of our Sotheby's offices. And so I, I basically do sales consulting and I'm always like cheerleading every agent at every company on Instagram. They have a big sale, nice work. That's great. I take them flying in the helicopter if they're, you know, I, I try to recruit them to our company sometimes, but I'm not annoying about it. Like a, like a super EXP downline guy. I'm yep. like, uh, Hey, you know, you're doing great. You, if, and if somebody like, I think has a really good trajectory to sell luxury homes, those are the people that I try to you know, bring over because I do believe Sotheby's has the best to offer for luxury real estate in the world. And we have great opportunities to sell things in higher price points that people don't often get those opportunities at other companies. But I've, I build really strong relationships with people from all over. And I think other people are always trying to dunk on and, and, and be mean. There's probably like two people in Michigan that I think are dumpsters that I've maybe made fun of online. But other than that, I'm like, I promise I'm nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well and Sometimes we can't help it, right? If, you know, yeah. sometimes they, they've earned it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it, it's such a big deal to, um, I just don't get it. The agents, well, I do get it because I used to think this way. Agents see other agents as competitors. And, yeah. you know, the, the, so they think of it like this adversarial thing. Well, that's not how a transaction works. If you've ever I actually think. sold a home, that's not how it works. It, it becomes a team effort. And, you know, sure, maybe like you're trying to get something for your side and they're trying to get something and, and you, you know, you go back and forth a little bit, but that's all to accomplish the same damn goal is getting the home sold. 
And it's hard to do that if you are thumping your chest and you know, you're in this dick measuring contest with the other agent. It's just so counterproductive and stupid. Yeah, I agree. And the fact that there's so many really, I mean, it's a 40 hour class and a 70% on a, a C minus on a test to get this job. Most people sell six houses a year, like on an average. And you, the things that I see come through after you know doing this for six or seven years now with some people, you're like, how every, every, I have this software called broker metrics. And every time I have like a real trouble person, I pull up their sales and I'm like, oh, that's why hmm. they yep. do no business. And this is why. Yeah, that does not surprise me at all. Um, so Dylan, in these seven years you've, you've been selling homes, what have you found to be the most challenging? Like what, what, what's been the hardest thing about building a real estate business for you? I don't have an assistant and I also run six, six businesses total. So time management and not like, ne- like neglecting time for myself, I think is hmm. uh, something I, I would really like to work on. But, um, you know, all of my businesses are like summer businesses between the helicopter. I have two lakefront Airbnbs with pontoon boats that we rent to the guests. Um, I have a title company. I have, you know, all these other things and that going on and they all hit at once. So every day, and I also do consulting for a pharmaceutical company. Um, and they all happen all at once. And I never, you know, try, I don't get a lot of time for myself. So it, that would be time management. Um, you know, I don't use a calendar. Everything's in my head. Sometimes I forget things. My text, Oh, good Lord. My te- Yeah. That's why I missed your, your call yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it. That, yeah. that explains it. Yeah. yeah just it, completely slipped, uh, slipped yesterday. Yesterday was crazy though. I mean, I, uh, if it was in a calendar, I would have, I would have missed it. I get it. I mean, I, I'm juggling a few different ventures. I mean, most of them are, they kind of work together, but nonetheless, like if you're being pulled in different directions, that's hard. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how you function without a calendar. I don't that's either. crazy. Yeah. But you just found <laughs> organized chaos, right? Yeah. My desk, you know, is just, it's a pain, but yeah, that, that's a, <laughs> probably, yeah. you know, but other than that, as far as, you know, challenges, um, you know, you have to be able to sell your product really well and yourself really well. And if you don't have a good product, then you're not going to be able to sell it very well. And that's why, you know, I believe in our brand from a standpoint of, you know, working in luxury. So that was good. And then, you know, you had to learn how to advertise other people because when you're coming in with no experience, you know, use every resource that you can possibly have to win. And if you you don't have a lot of resources, things that you can do is show up on time, have a clean car, have a great presentation, you know, remember people's names, remember their birthdays, remember their kids' birthdays, remember their kids' hobbies, their hobbies, you know, some of the things that I've gotten for closing gifts for people are so disgustingly specific to their life that it's sitting on their wall or their desk forever. And it's a story. Every time, um, every time somebody walks in their house, I get brought up as a story. I've had eight couples or nine couples or something like that get engaged in the backseat of my helicopter after closing on their homes. Um, we like roll out the red carpet with them. My girlfriend's awesome. She does like She's really creative. She also she's also an agent, and you know is is getting into medical school right now. But she's really creative with helping with that type of stuff as well. That's happened eight times, at least. And then other times for people that are strangers that call my my tour business and want to want to get engaged in the air. That's cool. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, I I proposed to my wife in the Zion Narrows in Zion National Park, like two miles back in this canyon. Helicopter would have been cool though. Yeah. <laughs> would have been faster to get there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I've never been on a freaking helicopter. It's, it's driving me nuts. You ever come to Michigan? I will come to Michigan. Well, if you do, you know, I'm, I'm here. Let's do it. It's a uh, 100% rides on me and it's actually Michigan's beautiful. So it's fun. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to fly it too, I can, I have to sign a couple papers, but you know, oh, yes. a flight lesson too. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. I will take you up on that at some point. That's cool. Um, what, when it comes to other agents that you see, cause you know, you, you say you run an office, so you, you oversee a lot of other agents. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see agents making on social media? Being a secret agent. Mm. If it's in that, not using the platform for what it's designed for. So 
like if you think Instagram, you need to think this is a photo sharing app and a video sharing app and the visuals are important. So when you see somebody post a listing and then they have to put a gigantic, humongous logo on something and then their phone number and their address and their office number and their broker number and all this crap and it takes away from the photo, people just go add, they swipe by it, it kills your engagement and next time no, but nobody's gonna see your post. But everybody right. has to say, oh my God, I'm, I'm a CRS, MLB, NYJ, you know, they have all their little designations on there and you're like, dude, just take a great picture of the house and post it, number one. Um, you know, that's Instagram, you know, people that do videos, if you're going to make a video and you're going to talk, if the audio is shitty, I will not listen for more than a half a second. If it's, if the audio sucks on anything, it's just like, okay, well, the, you can't get the audio, right. You're probably not getting anything else. Right. And I like how you have a very nice microphone there. You know, the audio is going to be bad on my end. Cause it's just coming through my computer, but you know, when we're, when we're making real advertisements, that's important to me. Yeah. Uh, See, I, I want to pause there for a sec. Like having decent audio is so simple. Like it's, it, I feel like you almost have to try to have shitty audio. Like you just open your laptop and you're recording through your laptop. Right. Yeah. And it sounds pretty damn good. Like you, you don't need this big fancy mic and all this um, to have decent audio. I don't understand how people publish stuff with shitty audio. Like, I don't even understand how they have shitty audio to begin with. Yeah. Continue. Um, I stopped paying for Facebook ads and Instagram ads after they censored the president. I was like, Hey, these guys don't need my money. And mm. that's the value that I stand for. And honestly, I've been just shitting on the left on my Instagram page. If you've seen that. I, I've noticed. Yes. All I, I get, I get like 90 positive messages a day. And one kid that lives in his mom's basement that like, you know, doesn't like it. And I was like, well, you're not going to buy a house from me anyway. So boohoo. But right. I, usually people say, you know, they're like, oh, stay neutral in, in, in your business dealings. And I was like, you know what? I'll take these guys and have a blast. And, you know, if you don't like it, you can go somewhere else. And that's, a, that's something that that's not necessarily my recommendation, but it has worked wonders for me. Yeah. I don't, I don't even have a problem with that. Like I'm not completely neutral all the time. Sometimes there's things that we think, you know, is, is polarizing when it's really not like nine, like you, like you said, 99% of people would probably agree with you. They just don't say anything, but if you, if, if you're okay with the consequences, if you're okay with somebody potentially unfollowing you or not hiring you or bad mouthing you and you're okay with that. Okay. Like there's, there's a lot to be said for attracting your own tribe. And then you work with people you like and you work with people that are fun and that you'll become friends with, which honestly leads to a lot more referrals down the road when you're working with your people, you know, your tribe versus, you know, everybody. Cause if you work with anyone and everybody, you're going to have disagreements. You're going to have uh, personality clashes. You're going to have all sorts of shit that if you're attracting people just doesn't happen. You have to know your audience when you do stuff like this, but like, yeah. for example, I had a listing appointment the other day, a million and a half dollar house. I walk in there and they're like wearing masks and they're like, do you have a mask? I'm like, no. And I'm not going to pretend I'm sick to sell your house. And they're like, I was like, okay, like, well, you've been vaccinated. I was like, never in my life. And I never will. And then they go, okay, can we go? All right. And then I like made a comment about how much of a dumpster fire Gretchen Whitmer was like, and this is like five minutes into our appointment. I could tell though that they were good people, right? End of the appointment, they go, how were you so comfortable saying that to, that stuff to us in the first two minutes of meeting us? I was like, I don't care if you hire me or not. I was like, I know that we're gonna be a good fit. I know that I can do a great job selling this house. I know that I can advertise it better than anybody else. And the other people in our industry who would do a really good job probably aren't driving out here, just to be honest with you. So you're probably stuck with me. Um, and then they were, they're like, then they completely opened up, thought it was awesome. And I can tell they're going to be like one of my biggest referral sources ever. Well, you, you know, you showed up with a certain level of posture and, and confidence and, you know, honesty, you know, a lot of that's just honesty. Um, you know, some people may disagree with how you said that, but like, you're, you're just being yourself. Um, and, and they very well could have gone the other way and said, you know, this isn't going to work. And you, you go and find somebody else that is a good fit. Like there, there's so much business out there. There's so much abundance. Yeah. And I know what it's like to, you know, to 
like, I please somebody work with me for the love of God. And so you'll work with anyone. And a lot of times that just leads to, to more bad clients and more, or not even bad, but just not the right fit. And they drain well, you. People that you don't want to follow up with after the sale. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The, great my point. This is unreal. It's like every year I rent a movie theater, like the biggest one I can get. I tell everybody to bring themselves and as many people as they can. I make an entire movie trailer for the whole year's sales. Um, you know, it's like catered. We do events after we have giveaways and prizes. And even though I've only sold, let's say about 200 homes last year, I had like 450 people show up to my client event. Nice. And not all of them are my clients. I was like, bring 10 people if you want. I don't care. This is a great movie. Just bring them. I ended up sitting on the floor. There wasn't a seat for me. Other people, you know, well, whatever. I don't care. But, you know, stuff like that. I think, um, you know, there's a couple at our office that have been doing real estate forever. And they do a quarterly past client event. And they just cater it. And then they do two open houses a week. And they sell like 70 million in business a year. And they just remember people's names. They, they're not even that great at marketing. You know, nothing that I would like, I would never go out of my way to say those guys have marketing down. They're just nice people. They do a great job and they follow up and stay in front of their base all the time. Yeah, they're consistent. There's so much that comes from consistency. Even if you're just average, it works. And I love the fact that you, rather than only letting your past clients come into your, your movie event, you're just like, bring as many people as you can. Cause that's how you get new people. Yeah. yeah the, I, look, I've done that before where like you only have so many spots and you're like, this is just for past clients. But how cool is that? If you're like, no, let's get, let's get the whole theater. Let's maybe get two of them and bring everybody. And that's how you keep the new people coming in. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, Dylan, every, every episode we have these rapid fire questions Either or questions you can answer, uh, you can elaborate if you choose to, but um, we'll just blow through these and then we'll let everyone know where they can find you, where they can follow you and, and see what you're up to. Uh, let's see, Facebook or Instagram? TikTok. T TikTok. Uh, okay. So I meant to ask you, you know, with all of these videos, like where are you seeing the most traction? I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned TikTok because I would have totally glanced over this. I have, I get paid by TikTok now. Oh, really? Okay. I've never been censored or had some dumb vaccine thing on the post from TikTok. Right. I've learned a ton about investing in real estate, investing in cryptocurrencies, investing in penny stocks. TikTok has made me money. I've learned real life skills. Some of my videos have gotten over a million views that didn't cost anything to create. And the comments and the engagement that I get are so local that it's like, I, I should be paying them to let me list videos on their platform. They're so, it's so good. So honestly, Instagram is great for getting in front of my people, but TikTok, like I book helicopter flights from there all the time. I got my first listing from there this last year. And, um, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's great for local awareness if you use hashtags correctly. And if you follow me, Heli Realtor on there, um, you know, a lot of it is helicopter content, but there's a guy, Aaron Guru shows home on TikToks. He, he, this, he was a newer agent in LA and he just went to broker tours and did vertical videos of nice homes, overlaid great audio, ding, 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 great audio and good songs and good cuts to these houses. And now he does like a ton of business and he's got enough followers on TikTok that he's probably making 10 grand a month off of his videos. What's his name? Aaron Guru Shows Homes. Aaron Guru Shows Homes. Nice. There's, there's another guy. Um, Sotheby's agent. Can't think of it right now. I did a clubhouse interview with him. I'll try to think of it before the end of this, but he's a great Sotheby's um, agent in uh, like the Washington DC area and kills it on TikTok. That's so cool. So cool. All right. Um, books or podcasts? Books. Uh, you know, I've been on a, I've been on a good amount of podcasts that I've enjoyed and it's been fun. Um, but I grew up reading, you know, I was homeschooled until eighth grade. And if I could get my schoolwork done before 8 a.m., which I would, I wake up super early, I could do whatever I wanted for the rest of the day. So I would go ride motorcycles and skateboard and do all this other fun, great stuff. But we read a lot. And I know this is supposed to be rapid fire. So I'm going with books. Love it. Um, books or audio books? I think you get more out of a book. 
but the yeah, best I agree. The best audio book though, if you've watched Entourage, they wrote a book from Ari Gold's perspective called Rules to Rule By, and it's narrated by Jerry, Jeremy Piven. Really? From Ari Gold's perspective of what it's like to be an agent and the history of Ari Gold. It's hilarious. Go buy it. You will you will not be disappointed. You'll laugh the whole time and it's got real good business. <laughs> I love Ari Gold. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look that shit up. That's oh, fantastic. Wait. <laughs> that, man, I missed that show. Yeah. All right. Um, iPhone or Android? Come on. I know. You'd be surprised a few people say Android. I feel bad for them, but, you know. That's Alexa kind of cool. are... That guy's double masked right now. <laughs> In their car. Yes. Yeah. Alexa or Google Home? No. Uh, no zero. Can't, can't allow these types of... Uh, censorship criminals into my house got it burgers or pizza there's a pizza place in livonia michigan called corsi's pizza it should be on barstool really yeah new york or la neither i can get rid of the, both of those i go to freedom i like freedom <laughs> there you I go in michigan anymore so florida right yeah Flo florida's fantastic um NFL or NBA? Neither. Baseball or football? I don't support any woke athletes that don't stand for the national anthem. Yeah, it's getting distracting and annoying for sure. I, I race motorcycles, so motocross, MotoGP, Formula One, but I would rather play any sport than watch somebody else do it. And that's why I'm on two hockey teams. I race motorcycles, I mountain bike, I play golf. I don't care who, who I mean, watching Tiger win is kind of cool. But other than that, you know, I'm, I don't go out of my way to watch TV. I don't even have cable. Fair enough. Mountains or beach? Mountains. Vale. Clyde. Vale? Vale, Aspen, snow mass. I'm a big, big, big snowboarder. I've had season passes forever, so. Nice. Beach you can do anywhere, but there's something special about going, going snowboarding. I agree. I agree. Have you ever been to Jackson Hole? I, that's on my list. Oh, so I'm in Salt Lake. You know, we have some pretty incredible resorts, Park City, Snowbird, you know, Brighton. But there's something about Jackson Hole. It's just, it's so big. It's so steep. It's just a really freaking cool resort. Yeah. Highly recommend it. I'm going to Scottsdale uh, this weekend to go downhill mountain biking, actually. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm going to Scottsdale in the morning, actually, for a fairway mortgage event. I will be there for four days. <laughs> Hit me up. Nice. Yeah. It'll be nice and warm. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, podcasts or vlogs? Probably podcasts, I would say. YouTube or Facebook Live? Um, oh, YouTube. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or Millionaire Real Estate Agent? Rich Dad, Poor Dad, for sure. That's like a not even a, a close one for me. Yeah, yeah same. Yeah. Uber, Uber or Lyft? Uber. Gary V or Grant Cardone? Jordan Belfort. Ah, that's straight line persuasion. Yeah, I took that course. Um, I actually wrote him twice, tried to get him to invest in the pharmaceutical company I work with. He's not allowed to trade securities anymore. Uh, but can yeah, he do it through a family office or something? Good. Grant, I'm, Grant is incredible. 10X is great. Guy bugs me a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you watch the podcast that Grant did with Jordan Belfort, you know, it made me like Grant less, but I do respect, I love multifamily real estate. So, um, the fact of what he's been able to do is incredible. But if I had to go hang out with somebody, you, I've, it's got to be Jordan Belfort all day. Yeah, he seems cool as shit. Yeah. He does. Um, what's the most impactful book you've ever read? You know, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People would be, you know, something that I think everybody should read every year. Um, you know, when I was a kid, I read Art of the Deal and I thought that was good. Um, just for, you know, business and sales. Um, for real estate specifically, have you ever had Dan Lesniak on this show? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hyperfast agent. Yeah. That's a great one. That's all my new agents. I get them to read hyperfast agents and ninja selling. Nice. Um, Defeat mega agents is another great one because they're all about, you know, doing a lot with a little bit of resources and focusing on relationships. Like I do not want to have a Facebook ad of, you know, where you're getting 75 people to respond and you have to sit there and weed through the crap all day. I want to like, I want to chat with people like you and sell somebody like you a house 
or get a referral from somebody like you rather than trying to weed through the garbage all day and make cold calls and stuff like that. I've, I, I did cold calls for one day. I sound like a, a girl on the phone. I have a pretty high pitched voice. So nobody's, nobody's cold calling from me. Half of the time I order pizza, they're like, ma'am, calm down. Yeah. <laughs> Chill, Peggy. Yeah. Uh, it- I mean, you've, you've mastered attraction marketing, you know, you, you do it your own way. It seems to come natural to you. And that's by far the most, uh, just the most effective means of advertising. And it's for the most part, it's free. I mean, unless you, you know, producing a video or something like that, the cost of that, but it's not, you know, the cost per lead, um, attraction marketing is everything. So, so very cool. Um, any app recommendations, are there any apps that you're playing with right now it could be social media, but you know, anything for productivity or anything. Call all of your past clients four times. Own app. Just call them. Don't text them. Call them four times a year and ask them the forward questions, family, occupation, recreation, dreams. How's your family doing? How's work? What are you doing for fun? Dreams. Once you hit it big, what do you want to do? Work yourself into the conversation in the end sell them a house, sell them an Airbnb, sell them an investment property, help them in some way, shape or form, help their business to thrive. An architect that is awesome in Michigan, I convinced to get on Instagram and he went from zero to 250,000 followers, got verified and he's doing multi-million dollar architecture jobs all over the US. And I had to beg him to get on there. I'm like, your shit, it's like super modern. I'm like, this stuff is so good. This should be in the Hamptons. This should be in LA. This should be in the Caribbean. And now, you know, he's way surpassed me online. So I think it's, it's cool to see that type of stuff. That's cool. And and that's, what's possible with social. It, it still boggles my mind that agents fight using social media as a tool, which, which it is, you know, like, I I just don't get it. I I know they're, they're nervous. They're scared. They they're afraid of how they come across on camera. Um, I hate the way my voice sounds, which is fantastic because I have a podcast and uh, you know, I just don't care anymore. You just have to get to that point where you practice enough and you just don't care. You just put it out there and you'll attract the right people. Yeah, you, You've shown that. Um, so D- Dylan, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're doing some really cool stuff. Where can people find you? Where do you want them to follow you and, and watch what you're up to? Yeah, Instagram is probably the place where you'll see the most of our real estate content at Heli Realtor and same on TikTok. Um, you know, that's, that's where the, you know, I'm pretty re- receptive. If anybody ever needs any, you know, consulting on anything, you know, message me and call me. I don't care. I, I, I help people for free all the time because that's how you get all the referrals, you know? That's right. All the referrals. Yes. We'll put your social links in the show notes. So if you're, wherever you're listening to the podcast, click into the show notes. And if you're watching on YouTube, click into the description and, and you can see Dylan's social links there. Appreciate you coming on the show, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Cool.